All right. Um, this is Kim with Lead Generation Source. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see my screen. Oh, and actually looks like so far it's only Brian on the attending side. So Brian, you got to tell me if you can see me and hear my screen. No, wait. If you can see my screen and hear me. <laughs> I said that backwards. He's like running from across the room. We're going, wait, am I muted? I can hear you, Kim. That's good. And see you and see the screen. <laughs> yeah, except for that since we are both on the back end, then you can hear me anyway. But seeing the screen is a good thing because that means it, anybody viewing it should be able to as well. Okay. I don't see any attendees. So maybe it what was it Brian? Oh, yeah, he was in there. Now he's not anymore. He maybe he couldn't maybe he couldn't see it. You notice, um, or I noticed today that I'm getting two links, one with the presenter link, one without. Yeah, so that's because you're you're in both. I should probably go in and take you out of it, but I don't know how without screwing it up. So that's on my nope. to-do list. No problem. I'll try, just try both. I had pulled them both up and I was like, oh, she made me attendee. Okay. <laughs> so, or I mean a presenter. Okay, let so me I think that's what happened last week because I think I ditched one of them, put it in the delete. Remember when I said I couldn't find it? Yeah. And I think I had deleted it um, because I saw two, not realizing. So. Okay, well, we're going to wait and see if anybody else hops on real quick. In the meantime, I'm trying to access something. If I can remember how to do this. No, go to this one. I just made the wrong one by default. Oh, well. Um, I need to look at this one, maybe, and then I'll take it off. So that was on Saturday. Man, I get a lot of emails. Mm-hmm. I probably have some more. I, I just, just keep deleting stuff, but I probably still have about 10,000 and all my, it's crazy all my accounts okay i'm hoping i can get this to work on this computer too okay do note down your personal activation code below okay so i need that real quick and i'm now let's go back over to demio and see if anybody oh we do have you know what i could do i could keep <laughs> brian <laughs> i can hear you but you can't see me that's what he says <laughs> Uh, I, I can see you now. I can see you on the on the as an attendee you now, if that's what you mean, <laughs> or that I just can't see you. Okay, let me see. What the heck? That thing's unplugged. How is it ringing? <laughs> it's like literally unplugged. How is this ringing? I I feel. I can't, it's unplugged. It's, is that the one that it was? Did I unplug the wrong phone? And that's the one I keep getting. Somebody keeps spamming it and trying to get me to do a merchant thing. Oh, good, Brian. Well, then let's get started in case you need to leave like soon. So, oh, and happy birthday to Stephanie. Yeah, there are some, I have some pretty good secrets. Now, I'm not going to share them all at the same time because there's just too many. So let's see. All right. So again, welcome. And everybody here already knows me, but, you know, this is a blurb about me in case you didn't. I was hoping that there'd be some some new people, new blood, but I kind of did share it a little late. So, and that's part of my, I need to get that syndicated so that the information goes out a lot faster, right? So let me go to this one here. So some random updates before we start. Um, first of all, remind me at the end, and Brian, you may not be here for this, but remind me at the end, Joanne, and I'm going to show you guys uh, a neat way to get trending topics off Pinterest. And it's you know completely free. It's already built in. And I didn't know this because I'm not a huge Pinterest guru, but I'm getting there. Um, I did a post about, a web, about webinar software that's in our group. And of course, as you guys remember, you can't post an affiliate, a direct affiliate link. So no matter how awesome it is, Facebook doesn't let you do it. YouTube doesn't let you do it. Pinterest doesn't let you do it. I'm sure LinkedIn doesn't let you do it. So now it's you have to write a post to, look, to send people. So you can read my gibberish if you want to, but you could just post, 
click through and and look at the sales page if you're interested in webinar software. And the whole reason why I jumped on that one is because I had I paid fi I paid $500 a year for Demio. And while it's okay, it doesn't let me do evergreen webinars. And that's what I would prefer to do when I'm selling, when I'm pitching stuff. So like if I'm going to pitch Webfire to somebody, I don't want to have to do a live webinar once a week for that, right? So I want to be able to just have something that they can come and view at their leisure. And if you guys have ever heard of Ever Web ever webinar that's a lot like that is what they're trying to build it off of it's new so there'll be kinks but apparently they're in singapore so i bet they stole the good code and that's they basically said that they stole the code off of somebody else he didn't say that outright but that's what i read so anyway so if you're if it's something you're interested in um i did sign up as a reseller but as i've always warned in the past the reseller stuff gets kind of iffy later on so you can i could sign up as a reseller today and then in a year they go oh sorry we're not doing resellers anymore so it's just something to, to keep in mind it is on there and i will be reselling it later on if it's something you're interested in okay another thing e-commerce does rank for seo i know i've said this and i've proved it and i'm proving it again with this screenshot i'm on page one and you can see i blocked out the keywords because i don't want people competing with me especially on my page one <laughs> and um you can where it says not ranked on some of these, that doesn't mean that they're really not ranked there. In fact, I tested, I think this one right here where it says not ranked. So it goes Google, I think Yahoo and then Bing. And so this Google one, it says not ranked, but when I went on and checked, we were actually there, but we were on page two for it. So we were on page one in these, page one here, page one here, um, we're moving up on some of these. And this is literally I just entered these and I, I broke the keyword, I use Webfire to, to watch these. And the way they have it is that it basically uses your own IP address. And so if you run too many keywords at once, it blocks it. So these are just the ones I know about. There could be a lot more that I don't know about. In fact, I, I typed in one of my ornaments today and on my phone, because here's another thing. So desktop and mobile can show di completely different results. So if you, and, and there's a third thing to that as well, when you're ranking, and so Brian, this is something that I just found out, is that when you're when you're trying to put content out, and you're like, let's say you do a post and you're like, oh, hey, I want to I want this to go out and I want it to be indexed quickly. Well, I guess there was a change last month where they're not indexing content. Google's not indexing content very quickly. And so there's been some tests done and they said it looks like the they pushed it out so that it'll show up on mobile first. And that's probably because like 86 percent of traffic or something like that is like mobile. And that depends on the industry. But. Yeah, so that was just something interesting. Then I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. But so these are going to be all based off of desktop rankings. So I actually went on my phone and searched for um, one of my keywords. And I, I that's actually this one. I came up on the second page in Google, but I was laughing because there was somebody on eBay is selling my item. And so it came up in the, in the sponsored posts. And then I came up in the images. I was the first one ranked on Amazon. So I was, I was shown from Amazon. And then I showed up in like two other spots just on page one. And I was like laughing hysterically because that was cool. So um, e-commerce does rank. Excuse me. How are they showing up for your product when you make them? On eBay? I don't know. There's a, a software that you can get and I don't have it and I will never do this. But they, they call it arbitrage. And so it's where you buy something and you just sell it for hire. So that's what right. they're doing is they're, they're, they're probably buying it off of Amazon and reselling it on eBay. But they're not buying it until because that's prime. So they're not buying it or and in fact, the software just makes it so it's pretty much seamless. So it'll look like somebody bought it and then they're shipping it somewhere else. So they're just using Amazon to do their drop shipping. So they're buying it from you in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not they're not hijacking it. There's no way they are. That entire listing credits me and everything. It says, you know, blah 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 by EP laser. And I was like, oh well. Okay. okay. And so and I've seen that come in before. I'm like, wow, that's weird. They bought it from here, but they're shipping it somewhere else. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And you know, during Christmas time, that's expected, but during the rest of the year, not so much. And so I see that happen quite a bit. So I can't get my stuff to sell on eBay to sell my, to save my life. So I'm glad somebody is because I don't care. I just was telling my husband, he goes, you should, you should just list your stuff on there. I said, why? That's one more channel I have to worry about. If somebody else can get in the cell and they make a few bucks doing it, what do I care? It costs, it's good. I'm selling it for the same amount regardless. <laughs> so anyway, that was kind of fun. So anyway, so these are some of the ones that e-commerce, these are all e-commerce. Now I will tell you that this one right here and one of the other ones on page one are not keywords I expect anybody to ever type in. 
And in fact, it's just the exact title is what I did just to test it. And that's because I stole what I did. I didn't steal. I basically copied all my information because it's mine. I, I took it from Amazon and put it on my Shopify site. And when I did that, I didn't optimize it at all for search engine optimization. I just copied it over. So the, it, what was weird about that was that I was surprised that I couldn't rank as well for some of the partial words in there. So the exact match does kind of make a difference here, which was interesting to me. And I don't know if others have had that same issue or not, but you know, they say, oh, don't do exact match because Google will penalize you. Well, in this case, I'm being rewarded for my exact matches. So it might be something worth looking into is doing an exact match for the keyword you want to rank for. So if Linda was on, I'd use Pitbull because I always do, you know, Pitbull shirt. If you want to rank for a Pitbull shirt, it might be worth putting just Pitbull shirt, not best Pitbull short or shirt or cute Pitbull shirt or Pitbull shirt with heart. You know, unless Pitbull shirt with heart is what you want to rank for in e-commerce, it's looking like an exact match title. It gives you a better reward. So now that could be just because there's no competition, who knows? So I had to test a couple more things and um, I'm actually going to test that by swapping out some of these that rank in first in, in on page one for the exact keyword I want. Now, the one bummer thing about this is that it does not look like the Trek site currently as it is, is likely to rank. And that's because Google cannot read the campaigns correctly. And, you know, we've talked about this before is that there's a lot of a lot of stuff on the back end. WordPress itself is exceptionally powerful, which is what got me excited about Trex. When they said, oh, yeah, we built it on WordPress. I was like, oh, the sweet, the WordPress, I should be able to rank the, everything I do on page one then. Because I pretty, I mean, these are Shopify ones that I'm doing. And Shopify, everybody's like, you can't rank Shopify on page one. Uh, you can't. But you have to be, you, have, you know, have to know kind of at least a little bit. Hey, Linda, how's it going? That's all good. We were just talking about pit bull shirts. <laughs> so anyway, so the thing with Trex, though, is that because they took out, they built it on a separate section than the actual powerful part of WordPress, it's not using a lot of the stuff that WordPress does. And because of that, in fact, here, I'll show you guys what I did. I ran it through the structured data one, which I've done this before, because remember, I talked about this for um, Facebook ads. When you're When you're doing Facebook ads, Facebook has said, oh yeah, now of course everybody knows Facebook's kind of in like this turmoil right now, which is really interesting because, you know, and we sort of hinted at this in one of the prior webinars together, I think last week, Facebook did an algorithm change about a year ago. And when they did that algorithm change, that's when they did the schema information. And so that's what I kind of honed in on, but they actually mentioned something else. And that was that they were integrating third-party platforms more. They had already started it with some test stuff, but about a year ago is when they implemented all these third-party platforms. And ever since then, everybody across the board has had problems. So it's funny that they turn around and said, okay, with all of this, you know, turmoil over, oh, polit pol politicians got access to data we didn't want them to get access to and blah, blah, blah. Um, their whole crying and throwing a fit thing. They're like, well, we're not going to let third party platforms on anymore. And I'm sitting there going, really? Because now that, now that, that, like, that just literally triggered that, oh, yeah, they added that with the last algorithm change. And I was like, ooh, maybe this will be good news for us because. If the that was the second major change that they did, those were two major changes that they did, but I didn't really think much of that one. And now that they said, oh, we're going to remove it, I'm thinking, wait a second, maybe that should have been a red flag for us because that was a big change. So anyway, so that that was what the one, the second change that they had besides that third party add ons is this is the structured data tool. And this is what I, this is one of my campaigns, right? This is the campaign that I did. I built it, copied it over from them. So this is the campaign. And I literally, and I'm just going to close this because it's my computer's already mad at me. In fact, I have to close something else too real quick because it's bogging down too many resources. Sorry. Um, anyway, so this is the, I put it in here and it's detect, this is detected. And even though it says zero errors, zero warnings, zero items, it should have information here. And it doesn't. And I was actually watching something earlier about search engine optimization and that's what they were talking about is that because of the type of what this is um it, they it's if it's not detecting something here if you're not showing it then it's google's not reading it right 
which means that it's going to be very hard to rank for. Now, is it impossible? No. I've seen people literally rank blank pages for keywords. And the only reason why is, I think the reason why is because they have enough outbound links coming in and, and clarification from the outbound stuff to say, oh, hey, this is, this is what it, it means. And so Google goes, well, this page is blank to us, but um, we guess it's about dog collars because that's what everything says it is. And it, it doesn't always necessarily stick that way because um, Google does like to see it themselves. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you that if you're, if you've been pushing everything to your site, again, this goes back to our Etsy versus our site discussion is that you're going to have to pay for traffic probably, or use our free methods that we've talked about, but I would not rely on pure search engine traffic to the Trek site anytime in the near future, because without some major work on our side, it's going to be very difficult to rank our campaigns. So we only want to do that if we have a converting campaign. And even then I've got some other ways around that. So now that's not saying trucks don't abandon the truck site. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that to go wrong, you know, that Kevin guy that said, oh yeah, e-commerce, I told you, he told me, or he said in the post, e-commerce doesn't rank. Um, Linda, you know, here's the thing. And this is the thing that I'm going to say. She asked about um, Facebook, if they're getting less money spent on ads, do they care? It depends it depends on their long-term strategy because their long-term strategy is to have big, I think their long-term strategy is to have regular paying people. So this is kind of like a blessing in disguise for them. So while they're giving us this whole, Oh, I'm, I'm cranky. And am I, can you guys still see my screen? Cause this is being, it's like giving me really weird stuff on here, but anyway, cause it like tells me there's nobody here. So and then it's also telling you weird stuff. So anyway, um, if they're, I think their long-term strategy is to stop messing around with the little guys. Like they want people who are dedicated to it. So dedicated to their, they don't want the $5 a day. They don't want us on there. You know, they want the people who are going to be paying 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, 150 bucks a day. And so for them, by everything that they're doing is affecting us, right? It's affecting the ones that are paying five bucks a day. And we knew that this was coming. I'll be honest. I saw this coming from the day I started doing Facebook ads. And that's why I kind of st shied away from it because I never envisioned myself at spending 50 bucks a day or hundred bucks a day or anything. And that's, and I'm, when I say 50 bucks and hundred bucks a day, that's not on testing, you know, 15 different things at five bucks a day. That is spending that on one ad set because that's what they want. And that's kind of what they need for their algorithm. And I think I kind of actually talk about that on this next slide where I said, why focus on free traffic? And, you know, if you have money for paid traffic, obviously you should do it. You just need to make sure you know what you're doing for each platform. And, you know, Pinterest did a webinar today and they discussed their pricing for effective testing of ads. And it was a $50 per day minimum. They said our algorithm and our platform cannot give you effective data and essentially optimize without you paying at least $50 a day, you know, and Facebook has repeatedly said that they need a minimum of a thousand people to be able to, to reach. So a thousand reach to optimize and it has to be within a short time. So you can't spread that out, out over weeks. And I would venture to guess that that's not going to be as effective if it's spread out over days. And this is where I said, I don't think $5 a day is as effective as it used to be because <laughs> Joanne, you're doing a dollar per day on Facebook. That's hilarious. Now, if you're doing it for like likes or something, that's a whole different thing. This is going to be for conversions. So, you know, for conversions, it has to be within a short time frame. So, and what I mean by short time frame is we really don't know, right? Because they say in order to optimize, they need so many conversions. I think it's like 15 per week. So it has to, or why I say per week, it has to be within a seven day period. So if it starts on a, you know, you have a first one on Tuesday, you need to get all the way through the next seven days. You need to get 10 to 15 conversions in order for them to optimize. And you have to keep doing that, which means you have to dedicate the money. Now, a lot of us, we just don't have the money to be able to get to 10 to 15, you know, conversions, whether that's an add to cart or uh, so like what they'll do is the optimize for views. Well, that doesn't help us because yes, you can get the number high enough, but it's all a percentage game. So if Facebook needs a minimum of a thousand reach to optimize on conversions, and remember I told you that cost per cost per thousand, so CPM at $20 was good. 
that's a minimum of twenty dollars then, right? And we're looking at usually it's higher. Um, I know Linda, you've done some that where it's been lower than that, but that was over time. So we're looking at twenty dollars to fifty dollars plus just on that. So and they're also changing everything, so this could get a little rocky when they're pulling their third party data. Who knows how that's going to change things? Now Google Ads and Bing Ads, Bing Yahoo Ads, they might cost less, and I, I say might, and the reason why is because so Pinterest's fifty dollars a day equals they said a minimum of a dollar fifty to for per click so cost per click is dollar fifty facebook we know that at a dollar cost per click that that's you know pretty good so we're looking at a dollar to a dollar fifty cost per click so if you break it down that way now think about so when you think about that you gotta go okay well facebook works off of interests so you're not really your cost per click is based on okay if somebody's interested in it and again we've talked about the difference between that and and ads on google or bing or yahoo and you know targeting how that targets different people so if somebody comes in and they're like they're targeting a keyword which again we need to talk about buyer keywords at some point too because buyer keywords are going to be better for us to target so if somebody like if you were selling um a keyboard if you type in you know i have a this fancy lit keyboard so let's say i want a um, fancy backlit keyboard uh, that's not the keyword i would i would expect anybody to ever type in except for me but you know let's say that somebody want to put led lit key keyboard well if they if you put the word buy in front of it buy LED, that's going to be somebody who's ready to buy and so it's going to convert better now that's not how you target everything because content can drive stuff too but that's the type of thing we have to look at is okay, well, we need to look at buyer keywords as well. So keywords describing our stuff is one thing, but we may want to say, okay, I'd rather have 50 people who are going to put in, <laughs> you know what, Linda? I was thinking that exact thing today. I was thinking, oh my God, it's like door to door is getting easier. No, but we'll, we'll expand on this a little bit more. And this is where I'm going back a little bit to the basics, but Anyway, so Google ads and being Yahoo ads might cost less, but keep in mind that only a percentage of people that click on your ad will convert. So again, this goes back to the, if even if you can get it cheaper, you if you don't know your conversion percentage, it's still a gamble. And this again goes back to, we need to find converting products. And then before we even find converting products, or if we want to do a test or anything else, the only way to truly do that is to consider the most important part of driving traffic. And I think I actually might have done this backwards. Yeah, well, anyway, so the most important part of driving traffic is keyword research. So in order to drive traffic, you need to know these things. What are people searching for related to your niche? What are the words and phrases, keywords? What are the related words and phrases, right? So just because somebody types in Pitbull shirt doesn't mean that there, somebody else who's not typing in Pitbull shirt isn't necessarily interested in it, but you have to figure out what the related interests are. And there is a way to do this. Then of course you want to learn about the which ones are the easiest to rank for the fastest results. Now this one is the same thing I've talked about. The same one I use is Webfire. That's the one I've always used to do this. And that may be something you need to build up to. So you may have to just guess in the meantime or test like I do. Um, there are a couple of different things out there, but you're going to have to do a lot of manual stuff without software. So just keep that in the back of your mind that eventually you're going to have to have some sort of software for this. Now I'm going to teach you. So this is the other one we're going to do. Um, so keyword research drives everything. Um, you create your content based on what people are searching for. So this doesn't mean now I will say I have created products off of keyword research, right? I mean, I'll, one of my best selling ornaments is based off of keyword research and I was like oh wow people are looking for this and there's not much competition I'll make something for it and I did and we ended up doing we we sell you know hundreds of them throughout the year and so if, you know for the last two and a half years we've been doing that particular product so it's not like you can't create products from this it's just most people don't most people aren't doing it that way but you can it is possible and since we have the treks behind us, it, we are capable of doing that. But there are, you can create content based on what people are searching for. And let's do some examples, okay? You really want to know, Linda? It is one of my best-selling products. Well, actually, it's not. It's like my second best-selling, but I'll show you. Um, in fact, this is the search that, um, I don't remember exactly the search that I did. Pharmacist. Well, let's see if it shows up under that. It's not, that's not the one, the keyword that I searched for earlier. Oh, no, it's 
Anyway, it's my pharmacist ornaments, not my Celtic ones. I did not do Celtic keyword research. I don't know how that is the most selling one. What is going on here? I wonder if I can turn this off. Remove from Chrome. Is you're broken anyway, and I don't use you. Mega bonus is if you ever buy on AliExpress or eBay, you can get a bonus back. Yeah, you know, Linda, we that's on our to-do list. The problem is, yeah, for nurses, yeah, it's on our to-do list. The problem is, is that to do one that's an effective design takes some time. And so we have to, you know, take the time to do that. And we just haven't yet. But yeah, we need to do a nurse one because that was one that, that was actually one in my keyword research that I found would be pretty good. Now we can do ornaments, I believe, through Trex too. If that's something you guys are like, oh, hey, Kim has shown that there's a, a, an ornament niche here. You can. It's just that, you know, you won't be able to sell my type of ornaments because they don't cut wood there that I know of. They engrave it, but they don't cut it like I do. Okay, so one, the one thing that you can do, and this is where I'm just going to show you this. It's called Power Suggest Pro, and I'm trying to see if this is going to install in the background while we're doing this, is the software that, that cheats on this, just so you guys know. But I'm going to show you the free way of doing it. That's fine. Sorry, I can move this off. This, no, I can't. You guys get to see this for a second. Sorry. But this is basically what you do. This is the free version free way of doing it. When you type in Google, which I don't know if it's going to let me type down here, but um, pick a word, pick something, pick some sort of niche that you guys want to learn. Well, actually, let's do this one. Um, best. Let's do the word best, right? So best. Nope, that's a bad one too. Let's do incognito because then it won't mess with my searches. Okay, and then go to Google. Okay, so when you go into Google and you say, what is, and this is going to be, I'm going to stop there. Google starts automatically suggesting these, right? Now, I'm in, in incognito mode, and that's probably the better way to do it. Because if you're not in incognito mode, you'll see, like, the highlighted ones that are purple, and those are your searches. And that's skewed. What I want to know is something related to my niche. Let's say if I wanted to do, um, we'll say you did nurse, right? So we'll say nurse, and these are the top 10 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, recommended and um, trending almost, trending. Now, you can manipulate these. Let me tell you this. There is a way to manipulate this, and if it's something you want to do one day, I can teach you how to do it, but it's very expensive to do. But So you only want to do it if you're, like, I don't know, somehow want to show up as a recommended thing. Yeah, I'm just on Google right now. So this is just Google, plain old Google. You start typing in, you start typing in stuff, you type in A, and it's going to tell you the top 10 A words that are trending right now for Google. Now, the difference between this, and I don't have, when I'm incognito, I don't have my my keyword um, keywords everywhere on, which you can use keywords everywhere to help with this too, right? So it is on here. So if I type in A, crap, it's doing it. I don't want to clear my settings. Everything. Ah, this one doesn't show me tons, but it says everything sucks is a trending thing that somebody types in. That's hilarious. So when you do this and you can get, in fact, is it not working? I think they changed keywords everywhere. Let me check something. Um, ornaments. Yeah, you may just have to type it in now because it was letting me do it. So it would show me the other ones as well but it's not doing that anymore. So they must've taken that capability off. It's probably too reach. Oh no, there it goes. So now I can see when I'm typing, I can see these, right? So these are completely different. Yeah, I know. No, it's, it's there. It's just what happens, Linda, is that because, um, when you're doing a live webinar, it, it's hogging a lot of resources on both your computer and the internet. And so because of that, it, it just makes everything go weird. So even though it, I just, this is the first time I've seen it in about two weeks. They haven't, they weren't doing it. In fact, I just turned it off and back on yesterday and that's probably what triggered it back on. So what this will do is this will tell you a couple things too. So as I'm typing this, I can say, oh, look, ornaments meaning is, is one in here. So if that was related to what I wanted to do, I can create content based on that, right? So this one's 9,900 surges per month, and then the average uh, 
this is the ad cost. So somebody's paying 53 cents to get a click for ornaments meaning. I don't know why, but they are, you know, ornaments definition. So if these are ones that I want, here's ornaments with love. Now I usually do a little bit more if these are going to be keywords I'm interested in, but you can do this, you know, for as many as you want to do and get creative. Now what I do, and this is where I was hoping it opened. Let's see if it did. Did I keep... Fill my activation code. Not that you can get the software anyway, but the gray. Wait, do those gray sections can't come up naturally, or did you do something? Which gray sections? Oh, right here, where when I cover over it. Oh yeah, so this was the one that is it. That's the um, keywords everywhere tool. So this is keywords everywhere that's the tool and it, it so it tells me when I'm it tells me while I'm searching it also tells me right here after I've searched for something so that helps me know if it's something even a keyword I should worry about right now unfortunately these aren't combined but that's the, the one way to do it the other way that you can do it is if with the software and I'm gonna do a new post for you guys on this a little bit later today oh okay so keywords everywhere if you type in keywords everywhere.com you can go there and they'll walk you through. It's free. This one's completely free to get that. To get, you can install it for Chrome or Firefox and you can use it for when you're searching. And this is what shows up when I'm in Etsy, right? When I'm in Etsy and doing stuff, which again, like I said, their, their keywords are based on Google. So if it says it in Etsy, don't necessarily think that that's how many people search for it on Etsy, but let's do Pitbull shirt and see it's coming up with 3,600 per month. And these are ones where it's only going to show like the top one for whatever reason. But that's because this is a Google. These are how many people search in Google. In Pitbull shirt, it might be a lot more. It might be a lot less. Uh, nobody really knows. But we may see a release of something from Etsy later on the year on that one. So anyway, that's what that's what I use when I'm just goofing off on my own. Otherwise, I use um, Webfire to do massive searches. Or you can use Google Keyword Planner if you don't really care about I use, like I said, I use WebFinder to know which one ranks easier. Now, this other software I have, which like I said, I'll have to post about a little bit later. Where did it go? This one, it's called Power Suggest Pro. And so let's say I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do ornaments. So what's cool about this is that let's say I want to find out what kind of ornaments, right? So now I put this asterisk in there, asterisk in there. And so it's going to say it has the suffix, right? So it's going to do A asterisk ornaments, right? So now it's going to search everything related to that. Now I can tell you that it's going to come back with a bunch of weird stuff because I already did this once, but I'll show you just so you know. You can search Google, YouTube, Yahoo, Amazon, eBay, Bing. So I'll put in Amazon too and see what comes up. And then I'm going to say search. So you saw how long it was taking me to, you know, I mean, it takes some time when you're doing it manually, right? This still has a manual process to it, but you can come in and you can do all of these. So either way is going to get you some good results, right? And this one's 398 keywords in, so this one actually says 398 keywords in 13 seconds. But then I can go through and see which ones I just export the whole list, put it in Excel, and then I delete the ones that don't apply. Like if I, you go down here some, and you guys might be a little bit laggy behind me, I forget. Actually, this has got a lot more. I didn't do Amazon last time. This is a lot more. This is way better than the last time I did it. Well, I ended up with something tournaments was in here last time I did it. So I did something different. So anyway, so now I can see these. And then what I would do is I would select the ones I want and then I'd run them through WebFire or Google Keyword Planner or yeah, something like that to get your, your traffic. Because just because it comes up as snowman ornaments or snowflake ornaments, those are actually two that search that have high searches. Let's look for one that may not. Apple ornaments. Let's see how many Apple ornaments are searched. Actually, 590 per month. That's a surprising number to me. That's a really surprising number to me. So, but then as you, like I said, so I put in Apple OR and none of this other stuff applies, right? So that's why that's really useful. But you can do it manually as long as you want. If you guys are interested in this tool, it's like $57. It's not very expensive. It's a one-time fee. 
I'll post a thing about, about it a little bit in the group because I didn't get a chance to do that yet. But this is one that I was like, this is pretty cool because you can pull that data so much faster and then go through. And the fact that you can use Amazon will tells you that you can find, like if I just wanted to look for Amazon stuff, um, let's do with like shirt, for example, right? And I'm just going to search. Oh, actually, let me clear this out. Clear all res results. I'm going to do shirt and just Amazon. And I'm going to search that. And you can, you can get some ideas on like different things that come in with here. Now you still have to get creative even in here, right? Because just because I put shirt in, I mean, cat shirt, um, cub shirt. I mean, these are too generic, right? So I might have to go in and see something like what some content is. And some of the best ones are, you know, what is the best. Now you don't have to put an asterisk at the end. It's already going to do that automatically. Um, oops, I meant to clear all the results. Uh, check all, delete checked. That'll help. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and search what is the best and see what comes up on Google. And then you can start see, going through here. Now what's great about this is that this can help you create content. Because if you have something and you can get some niche specific and you again it's still some give and take here you still got to do some manual stuff and thinking about it and this is where you can go back to looking at the bottom down here too so let's see christmas ornaments is recommended hallmark ornaments popular ornaments and then of course this comes with the search ones because i have that keywords everywhere in here but like this one's examples of ornaments and it's a zero per month so if nobody's typing for that and i try to rank for that that's not going to do me any good Right, so that's why I want to make sure that I'm I'm targeting one. This one's personalized ornaments. Oh, hey, we can do that with Trex. So if I go in and I say, okay, personalized ornaments, of course, this is going to be hard to rank for, but it'll give you an idea of what that people are looking for. That so you can create content around that. Yeah, so teacher gifts is a good one. So you can say like um, in here, actually, what we could do. Let's clear all the results. What? Let's do. Well, you can even do if you just wanted to do best so you do an asterisk in the middle it'll do it in the middle right so you can say search that one i know 590 months now that's an average usually so a lot of those end up getting concentrated around something like apple is related to teacher so yes teacher gifts and then of course with graduation stuff a lot of that a lot of time that's when it comes up so we could see that's probably why it's showing higher right now is because of it being close to graduation, which is coming up soon. So if anybody's planning on doing some graduation things, it's going to be a good idea to start getting those listed. Do, 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 I'm letting it run. Okay, so um, keywords in this one. So I did an asterisk in the middle to see what. So this one's like best Amazon gifts, best anniversary gifts, you know, best anniversary gifts for boyfriends. So this is where you start to think about, oh, okay, I have something that would fit for that, right? Now, they're not all going to show in here, but this will at least give you some ideas, whether you do it this way or the, the manual way. So you can say, all right, you know, best jewelry gifts for girlfriends. Now, who knows if that's worth it or not? You have to go back in and look at the, at the ranking, which is why I like, oops, it didn't work. It was best, what did I say? Um... Let's just go with, I want a good, I want a long tail one. Like these long ones are good. So let's go down here a little bit. Yeah. And I wouldn't use anything that's dated 2014, 2015, even though it's for some reason, Google's trending that or showing that in their things. That's weird. Kitchen gifts is good. Chris Kringle gifts. That's pretty specific best long distance relationship gifts. I have no idea if that's going to be one or not. Let's try it. Best long distance relationship gifts. And there it is with 480 searches per month. Now I'm going to also tell you that keywords everywhere, this number, I don't, I'm not entirely sure where they get that number. You know, I'm not sure where they get this number from. It could be at a Google Keyword Planner. It may not be. I will also say that if you use Google Keyword Planner to tell you the 
any information. If you don't run ads, they're going to limit what the information is. So this is going to be probably be better as far as keywords than than um, Google Keyword Planner. Of course, if you have Webfire, Webfire will give you all this data when you throw it in there. So that's what I do. I, I put it into a list and then I throw it into a comma comma list, which is really easy to do with Word. And then you just copy it and paste it into into Webfire, no less than no more than 50 at a time, and it'll run the results for you. I cannot show you guys that live streaming. It would take forever because it's, you know, resource intensive. So that's where you can get some ideas. So best long distance relationship gifts. Now, if you had a product that related to that, you may want to create some sort of content for that. Now, I think I can show you on Webfire, like four. I just can't run like a 50 search. Let me... So this is what, and these are the steps I do, I take to rank easy on rank, on page one, by the way. Now, you, like I said, you can do a lot of this manually. And unfortunately, WebFire is a more expensive tool. And I don't know of very many that do this. There's a couple of them that'll do pieces of these. Um, let's do this one and do keyword tool. So I'm going to do that one and I'm going to do just GIFs. So that way there's two. And I'm just going to analyze those two so I don't bog down too many resources. And so what it does is it analyzes the first page and tells you what the likelihood is that you could rank on that page. So now I'm like, ooh, look, best long distance relationship gifts, 100. The score is 100 if you, I hope it's not lagging too much. That, and that's because nobody has it in their title, nobody has it in their description, nobody has it in their headings. So there's, and this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get on page one. This just means that if you do the work and you do the effort, there's a really good chance you can get on page one for this. Now you're like, but wait, that doesn't relate to my e-commerce product. That's okay. Because yes, you can rank for e-commerce products, but we're also going to have to do something eventually where we do content. And this is where Facebook has been leading. Actually, a lot of places. Google leads this way and everything else. They want to rank content. Content marketing was like a strategy from forever ago that nobody really latched onto because it's extremely resource intensive. It requires you to create to create content. So, you know, you have your 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 saw that you're trying to sell and you're like, oh, yeah, I have the saw that I want to sell. I'm just going to put the details out there and anybody who already knows how to use a saw or was looking for a saw will come into Home Depot. They'll look at the details and they'll buy it. Okay, that's that's traditional marketing, right? Nobody really has gone past that except for recently. And that's where they've shifted to content marketing. And content marketing is where you provide content and then you more it's more of a soft sell, right? So this is where you might go into something like top ten, top ten um best pit bull pit bull lover gifts. And then top pit bull lover gifts. Now I would obviously have done my research before I did this because these might come back as zero. Yeah, so these are under 100. So these might not even be the best anyway. So why, why don't we go back since Linda's on here. We'll go to Power Suggest Pro and we're going to say, um, we're going to do pit bull. Let's just do pit bull and see what comes up. Mm. Gosh, I'm getting such a headache with these lights and allergies. Oh, I hit clear. That didn't help. You have to hit the right button. I will default to that. Operator error does not make this bad. It just makes it, you got to not take your glasses off and click a button. Um, okay, so we're going to do Pitbull, and we're going to make it go through all these and see what comes up. So, of course, a lot of these are going to be not related to a specific, spe wow, Pitbull Beagle Mix. Pitbull breeds. Now that might be an interesting content article, Pitbull breeds, right? Just because that's, that's pure content and you can have, if you do it right and you do it on a blog, which I want to do, talk more about creating content, but we may not have enough time. Um, so let's say you, you say, okay, well, I want to check out Pitbull breeds. So now if you don't have Webfire, you're going to go over here and you're going to go to Pitbull breeds and you're going to say, oh, look, they're, there's obviously a lot of searches for it. So 33,100 searches per month. Now keep in mind, this is content. And 
if you have, when you have content, you're not, it's not direct selling, it's soft selling. So you're going to have lower conversions of sales, but if you can get some track of traffic of people who are interested in pit bull breeds, then they're obviously going to be more interested in something related to pit bull, you know, e-commerce items. So let's say you can go through, now I'm going to tell you just looking at these, this is going to be hard to rank for. Well, I say that this is going to be competitive to rank for. I don't know why that has such a low rating. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on there if there was a rating. I'd be like, okay, block my ratings. So let's actually see. I'm going to look in here because I'm looking at it. I'm thinking some of these look like they're, I've never heard of this one. And you have to kind of look at the page too. I'm, I'm kind of just cheating. So Wikipedia, it's going to be hard to beat, obviously, right? Dogtime.com. Let's look at theirs. And you say, okay, um, first of all, it's not in their title. Pitbull breed is not in there here, but here's dog breed, right? So it's not a direct one. So let's see what, what they think. Pitbull. Oops. I even yeah okay so I'm gonna check both of those real quick so of course they're combined because there's one with a space and one without a space the reason why I did it that way in here was to see what the scores would change so yeah they're saying that these are gonna be hard and I'm looking at that too just by just by looking at these I'm going oh yeah these are gonna be a tough competition so that's why I like using webfire but you don't have to you can just do it by looking at it if they're all stuff when you run a search, if it's all stuff that you're like, oh, okay, this is the one I wanted, sorry. If it's all things that you're like, oh man, these look like they got a lot of traffic, it's well-produced, that's another thing, if it's well-produced. Actually, I'm surprised you wouldn't be able to beat this one. This one's really clean though, so it's probably not a WordPress. I mean, it looks like it could be though. I mean, it looks busy at the same time, but it's the way it's laid out, see how it's got these lines between it and it's make it very, this is very separated from here. So you can make things busy as long as you break it up. The moo moo, wait, what? Chance is a moo moo. What the heck is a moo moo? So wait. Oh, in here, you mean? Oh, up here, there's one. This is why you guys, oh yeah, see, I see, Moo Moo Pitbull Puppy, okay. Super cute, by the way, but your dog's super cute. So anyway, so if that's something that you're like, oh, hey, I wanna create some content around that. Now keep in mind that no matter, and I was actually having this conversation with somebody today, I said, look, you know, you can, if you want to get traffic online, you have to have content. You have to have content. And if you want to actually get traffic to that content, you need to do the appropriate research, right? That's what it comes down to. Keyword research to drive content, to drive that content, right? So it it tells you what kind of content to create, um, how to create it, etc. Now that doesn't mean you can't use content you've already created. There are plenty of ways to to tweak that, but in order to get traffic, you have to have content. Now, the only exception to that, of course, is if you're in e-commerce and you're on a site like Etsy or Amazon, you're gonna get some natural traffic, but you have to do it completely different than you do here, right? I mean, we've talked about that on Etsy, is that the keyword optimization for those particular sites is completely different. That's the same thing on Instagram, you have to use hashtags, which is why we haven't talked about Instagram because Instagram is a completely different world and I don't wanna get us confused yet. So let's, for now, since we're actually, it's at 4.50 and I want to do some Q&A on anything so I can show you guys some tricks, right? That's not what I wanted. In fact, I can close that. That's resource. All Everything Adobe is resource intensive too. I don't want to save it. Didn't I say that? Oh, I said yes. I meant no. That's what I get with my glasses off, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go to Pinterest real quick. So I wanna talk about that. So when we're looking at things, you know, we've talked about Etsy a lot and we've talked, we haven't really talked a lot about Amazon, but we're gonna wait on Amazon. It, it's not too different, it's just much more competitive. 
I hear help. Somebody's screaming for help. Um, okay, let's go to Pinterest real quick. So I'm going to show you guys this before we run out of time. Now, if I'm on Pinterest here, okay, that's fine. So if we're going to look at, of course, oh, here we go. Look, you just even click on it. It says trending ideas, kitchen ideas, crafts for kids, healthy snacks, Tumblr funny, drawing ideas. But let's go back and let's do Pitbull. Right? So I'm going to say Pitbull and hit enter. All of these words up here are trending related to that category. I didn't know that. I just thought they were like subcategories, right? But no, they said I was on that training today and they're like, oh, yeah, these are trending ones. So Pitbull puppies, Pitbull training, Pitbull quotes, Pitbull, Pitbull quotes. Let's look at that one. There we go. It pops it in there, right? So you can look and see what is what people are searching for on Pinterest. So, you know, going back to our discussion about free traffic, you know, we can drive free traffic from any of these sites. And we'll talk more about how to build specific content. But the first thing you have to do is you have to know your keywords. So you have to do the research. Whether you're paying for software or not, you've got to do the research. And, you know, I find that it doesn't take me any less time to do my keyword research with software. I can just get a lot more keywords out of it So out of the same time. So that's that's kind of the difference. I don't want everybody to go, oh, yeah, the only way to do something in life is to be successful is to buy stuff. It kind of, but we can scale up to that, right? So, again, there's the the software that I just showed you guys is only $57. I'll post about it um, a little bit. As soon as we're done with this, I'll, I'll do a quick post about it and let you guys take a look at it. I saw somebody else just briefly mention it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's like, totally different. I mean, we've talked about doing that before, right? So there's two ways to do this. There's, if I want to say, um, uh, internet marketing, internet marketing. So you've got what they talk about here. So I can put the space and do like a W and see what it is. I can do an A and see what it is. I can do a B and see what it is. But the other thing I can do, so that's, that's one way. And then the other thing is to come down here and see the recommended things down here. Now, some of them will show up when you do it the other way. Some of them won't. So there's there's a lot of different ways to do research. The catch is, is that if you start doing these other elements, everybody's using a Google keyword tool, right? I mean, everybody uses it. So if you if everybody's using it, they're all using the same words. You need to expand beyond that. Whether it's manual or tools, it doesn't matter. You need to expand beyond Google Keyword Planner and start looking at going out to other keywords because and other phrases and and how you can create content i mean if you can come in here and say what is the best let's go what is the best pit bull? let's see what they say so what is the best pit bull bloodline to have dog food mix to own album okay so let's try this and see if they even have gifts I don't know what that 40500 was. What is the best? So they're saying zero per month. So that one may, wouldn't be worth it. So that's the catch is that this is why I like Webfire because I can do it all at once. I can have them search the volume. But the Webfire search volume and the search volume here is different. And I will go in here and show you. Did I say gifts or gift on that one? You can ask off and see if it changes anything on here. Nope. So I don't know. I was trying to, I want to come up with a second one so it doesn't get screwed up and just do one and bog down the resources. So even they're saying under a hundred. So yeah, it's, it's looking like that one's not going to be one. Um, what is the best gift for lover now i say that these aren't ones for searching but this doesn't mean you can't create content with them right so if you're like gift because best gift for pitbull lover might be the actual keyword and you say what is the you add that in there it's still zero so let's see here 12 best gifts for pitbull lovers i mean they're obviously writing these because they're being found so these are ways that you can at least come up with some ideas oh look pitbull lover gifts yeah anyway 
you could literally create content around just about any item. And when you're pushing that content out, now you're going to say, okay, well, now I'm in here, so Pitbull quotes. So now you can have a Pitbull quote, and maybe it's on a shirt. Or you can, I mean, there's like a hundred different ways to do this. But I want you guys to understand that you have to do the research up front. I mean, when we've been talking and we've been discussing about where everybody's stuck, and it's like, I think it comes back to you have to do adequate keyword research. And it's the same thing like I'm up against right now. You know, my sister and I, we were discussing this and we're like, okay, well, we decided that we were going to do something. Then it ended up being more difficult than it should have been. And now I'm like a week and a half into dedicating to it. And I'm going, man, I should have done my keyword research. And a perfect example of this. So we're doing the state mom shirts and I actually did do keyword research on it. And I only found like three states and almost all of them, it has nothing to do. Like if you say um, Nevada mom shirt, for example, it comes up with zero. Yeah, zero. So why am I putting all my effort into this? I, I One, I don't know if the product's going to convert. And two, I'm like, nobody's searching for it. So I want to make sure that if I have a converting product, that it's going to be a product that, you know, that I'm using the right keyword so people can find it. And again, the way people search is different all the time. So you could also use, and I'll show this last tool. I'm not sure you guys have seen me use before. Um, Google Trends. Wait, Brian, are you still on? It's showing me nothing that nobody's on. So I'm going to sh share one last piece of information that's kind of critical. Yeah, well, Joanne, the problem is, is that remember, you're only going to reach so many people on Facebook. So if you have a niche specific page, you can ask them and do a poll. The difference is going to be, and I'm not really sure, I'm assuming you're referring to something that I was talking about. The difference is going to be that you're only going to reach maybe one to 2% naturally, organically. And so if people take the poll, then you might reach more. But if they don't take the poll or they don't participate, then you're not going to reach hardly anybody anyway. I mean, yeah, you could get 50 people who cares and you just get run with that data, but it's not going to be like effective data, if that makes sense. Yes, I was actually um, talking about the uh, Nevada mom and the other states. That's what I was oh, referring to. Right. But and then again, it's like and I was even thinking about that. I was like, so how do you build an audience that would be specific to that? You can't. I mean, you can't be like, oh, yeah, people who love state shirts. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, that would be an interesting audience. But yeah, I mean, like I have a baker's site but i'm like if it's not baking related they're not interested and really they're not interested most of the time anyway unless it's some sort of video and then they get mad if it's just like a dumb video and i'm like oh, good thing it wasn't mine but yeah i mean there's there are a lot of different ways that we can get information to help us figure it out figure out like the one i always love on google trends is when you say so i'm going to put in a lawyer right and this was funny because I didn't even think about how many different lawyer terminologies you could have. But so you come in here, you go, well, I want to compare lawyer to attorney, right? So now I want to focus my keyword down. And you can, I think you can add, I don't know how many you can add, but this one shows me, tells me, oh, look, I, um, attorney is, is searched more than lawyer. But now let's say that I want to narrow that down to just the United States. Right, so this should be just the US right here. Yeah, so now I'm just the United States. And it still says that attorney is the dominant one. So what I should be doing is saying, okay, and then I can even search by, look, this one says Texas, lawyer is 35, attorney is 81. So more people are searching for attorney than lawyer. So if I were gonna do my ornaments, I should say attorney ornaments instead of lawyer ornaments because more people are searching for attorney than they are a lawyer. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, so those are just some, some different ways that you can, yeah, that's actually every state's like that. And then look, they have related queries and then you can look and say, oh, look, people really do have nothing to do with their lives. <laughs> so these, these are just some different ways. So what questions do you guys have, if any, at all? So far, I know we've talked about keyword research before, but I keep going back to that's got to be where we're stuck, because if we had a good 
keyword and that related into a product that we could test. And then we create content around that and drive traffic from, from you know, we, we create the content, we pin the content, we drive traffic from Pinterest. Because that's where, our, and where I'm leading with this is that we need to do the keyword research so we know our, at least our general topic, right? And then what we need to do from there is we need to go and say, okay, how do we create content and how do we drive that content from what sources? And Brian didn't say that he was on still, but I'm just going to share with you guys that one of the things that I've learned, and it's, this is a change effective last month, is that Google has, I think maybe I mentioned this already. I don't know. I've talked to a couple of people today, but they changed their algorithm so that, you know, not only are they, I think I did mention this, that it takes a little bit longer for us to index stuff and they're indexing, they index for mobile faster than, than desktop, but they also index videos faster. And I mean, when I mean faster, I mean, it could be a week or two before you get your post found on, on Google. So you have to like plan if you want to do a post like right now for Christmas time is when we should start be thinking about content that we want to write so we can rank it in time for Christmas time because those posts aren't going to get found for a while. Now it could be a week. It could be two weeks. It could be, it just depends on a hundred gajillion different variables. But, and I think I'm working on some ways to make it faster, but it's still going to take some time for Google to index those and they're prioritizing videos they're prioritizing videos. That's like hands down. We've known that's been happening. And that is definitely confirmed now is that of all the tests, it's they are prioritizing video content. So we have to start thinking more than just how do we show off our product? We need to start thinking about how do we provide content that will help drive people to our products? And that is, you know, you know, and Linda, you share a lot of content on Facebook that is not necessarily e-commerce specific. It's just niche. It's about your niche. It's about pit bulls and stuff. So what you can do is you can take that content, you can put it into something video format, doesn't mean you have to, you know, talk or anything. And then you can present that information. Now I do say that, but you know, that was part of what I was thinking about with that webinar software. I'm going, yeah, here's what you do is you go come to a webinar and learn more about, about uh, pit bulls. And you have a, you know, 30 minute thing that is just where people, you drive the people, but the whole point of the webinar, instead of putting it on YouTube, yeah, Linda, that wasn't your video, but you could do one where you could do like a little presentation about it or something, right? And then instead of putting it on YouTube, and this is the whole point of of the what's the nice part about the webinar software is that, you know, like Demio, I mean, theoretically, I can drive people to my replays, but because it doesn't work right and nobody can ever seem to get to them, I can't. And But normally they would have to sign up for the replays. Then they would go into my email into my automobile responder if I had one set up for that. I don't for you guys because, you know, this is all started with Trex and I don't want to be a D-bag and steal everybody. But anyway, so the whole idea is, is that you get them, it, you, you again, you capture traffic, capture traffic, capture traffic. And in order to do that, you have to start with keyword research. So you start with keyword research, you build your content, you build your 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 funnel, and then of course your products supplement that along the way. And that's your your products are actually your monetization of the system if that makes any sense. It, it, you've created your system and now you're monetizing it with your products. So you're creating your traffic funnel and then offering the products for sale. It's it's a real soft sell, but that's kind of the way everybody's going now. So I mean, you have your hard selling on platforms where people are buying, so like Etsy and Amazon. And of course, if people are searching for it and they can find you in search engine optimization, that's great. That's a bonus. But in the meantime, since we know that the Trek site can't is unlikely to rank we need to think about building content. And we can use other sites to do that, by the way. We don't have to just focus on the Trek site. Treks can be our page for selling. So like we can have our, our campaign page there, but we can use a blog site such as Blogger or um, WordPress or Tumblr. I don't know much about Tumblr, but Blogger or WordPress, and we can, dr we can use that as the core part, which I will tell you this, I, I've never used them because they're free and I've always, always had my own sites. And I went in there and I was like, one of the trainings that I'm taking for syndication, they're like, look, you need to just create one on here. And, you know, cause it, it's, it's what they call semantic, um, semantic sites. But Kim, I'm glad you brought that up. Why wouldn't we just want to do a blog on our trucks page or on our truck site? 
well, first, I still have no clue if it's going to rank because the what they've done is they've coded things so weird. I, it would be a major test. But you really don't think they would that would work? Uh, see, I thought for sure if we did the SEO, it would work because, I mean, I have a SEO Yoast on there. I don't know if where I rank with any of them, but I thought for sure they'd at least pick yes. that stuff up. Well, Google can't read the campaigns, so the campaigns will not rank. But if you right, but our page is well, and the blog should because a blog is a page. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't put the blog on there. I don't know how they set it up. Is my point. So because mm -hmm. they they've basically recoded sections of WordPress in order for it to work right with their with their things. So and, until I go in there and I apply a blog and I check, there's no way to know. But theoretically, if as long as it's working like a normal WordPress site, yes. But here's the other thing you get though is that you, you probably want to do both. And this is what they've talked about. There's, and I need to do a little bit more research to find out if they've clarified this or not, but um, you can put content on your site and then you could put either where that you syndicate the article over to the other site, or you have a completely just a supplementary article. And the nice thing about having it coming from WordPress or Blogger is that those are massive, massive platforms that of course, like WordPress, Google owns them. Do they own the WordPress.com? No, they're just linked to them. No, they own Blogger. They own Blogger, sorry. So the Blogger one, Google owns Blogger. So if you're on Blogger, that's a Google entity. And and Google goes, ooh, you have a Blogger site, bonus. And so now you're now giving yourself, when you link back to your products, you're now giving yourself a, like a thumbs up from Google just simply because you're linking from your Blogger site too. So even if you have a page, even if you have a blog on your site, you should still be doing something at least on Blogger because it's a WordPress or it's a um, Google entity. Okay. Okay. So Linda asked, what about setting up our shop on our fan pages? Like on, on Facebook, I assume you mean? And, and if you do, Linda, um, you can do that. It's just, there there's not gonna trex doesn't have a feed that i can tell like so like if i have with my shopify store in fact i think i even have it on my shopify store so if i go into facebook and i go into i should have it linked on this one go into ep laser now this is what's funny is that it's so buggy so the, regardless of the connection here because of the streaming yeah, so I have this. I have a shop on my page, and it's linked because of Shopify. I believe you can link it with Etsy as well, but I don't know. I think you have to use an app or something to do it for free. So it's pulling over all the ones that qualify, so people can literally see it on Facebook. Now, the benefit to that one, Linda, is that you suppose you're supposed to be able to like just share this from here, and it's not as punishing as it is if you're linking out, right? So even though I'm linking a product, let's say that I wanted to um, share this one, right? So I could share this to my page right now and it comes up with the carousel and everything on there. So it's a lot easier to do it this way than it is to, you know, create the post and then create the link and everything else. Let's see who can see this. Huh? So they want me to pick an audience. Yeah, but anyway, you're supposed to be able to, they keep changing everything. So that's why I said that uh, it'll be interesting to see. But you can share on a page you manage, or you can even share on your own timeline if you wanted to. And this is supposed to be much less penalizing than if you're if you're linking out, which is funny because it's still a link out. But this they're supposed to not penalize this as much as a link going out. It's still not going to have much organic reach. But the only reason why I can do this is because I have a feed. I have a, you know, Shopify has an automatic channel in it. So Trex doesn't have this. You'd have to upload your catalog and then you'd have to keep it updated. So that's one of the differences there. But yeah, theoretically, if you only have a handful of products and you don't mind doing that, definitely you could, you can go in and, and, and follow their instructions on doing that. I'll be honest, I got lost. So yeah, if you want to do a shop now, you just create the button as your shop now. Why is this not going up? How do you find your uh, Facebook shop works for you? Um, Is it I, worth setting up? I haven't had any purchases through it okay. at all. I've had like one person 
no, no, I don't even think they do. The thing is, is like, that was the fastest this has ever run. Like if I go to my Baker site, let's see if it'll go fast for it. Up until that moment, every time I've tried this, I've had a tough time getting into the shop. Hmm. So like I would click on shop and it would like not load. Mommy. Oh, look, like it's doing now. And actually this is still going faster than what it's. Hold on, baby, I'm, I'm on here. Yeah, so it's it's not it's still loading. It's still not even over there. And from what I understand, everybody is reporting this this as being a problem. And because of that, I think that makes this shop feature like ineffective. But you know that's where they're going. They're going to go to a, a direction where I think all of these platforms we're going to start to see where they they start turning into okay, now if you want to use this, you're going to have to pay a percentage or whatever. Thanks, Linda. Have a great night. And that's where I'm. I envision all of them going. Oh, okay, what? I want to. Mama. Yes. Um, are you coming home? Yes, in just a few minutes. Okay. I love you. Are you going with Grandma then? Yes. Bye. Okay. Well, you slam the door in her face, so she may not want to go with you. So go find out. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. She got mad because I wasn't listening to her and took it out on grandma. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, it's still not loaded. It's still not loaded. And even though, even with the without the, shop? Yeah, it still hasn't loaded. Still swirling. I'm doing it on my side just to see what happens. Now I'm seeing book boxes. It's taken a while. Actually, that says, oh no, there they are. They're all there. Well, I'm, on, I'm on the Baker site and it's not working. And it's it's What's linked to Shopify too. Oh. Huh. So that's um, it's just it's one of those and my sister's tried it on hers and it's just it's glitchy at best. Now what's interesting though is that the EP laser one was only added on um right before Christmas. And this Baker's one was added on a year ago. So there might be something to do with the like I might need to disconnect it and reconnect the app or something. Okay, what's your baker site? I just liked your laser site um, on Facebook. What's your baker site? Um, it would be facebook.com slash bakers and cake makers. I'll take away. I don't know what her problem was when she She wanted to tell me instead of you telling me. I was just checking because I was getting ready to leave. Yeah, she had been she was waiting and waiting and waiting and, I, and then she got mad because she didn't get to ask me yet. So I'll take one taken over. Okay. You have like 9,500 likes? Yeah. Okay, make sure I'm on the right one. Huh. I was just going to see how long it took it on, on this end because my internet's slow too. I'm mm. trying to get to 10,000. It's taking forever. Oh, well, I'll like it as my page. Where is it? Come on. Mm. Just telling them opening my freaking shop. This is insane. Oh, there it goes. I had to refresh the page, so it got stuck. Oh, there you go, because it came right up for me. Yeah, so it, cool. it's got to be. It's probably because I'm streaming, but that's. But even mm -hmm. when I wasn't streaming, it was having a lot, a, a real big lag there. So what mm -hmm. I, I, my guess is, is that people aren't using that as much right now, but they probably will in the future. And that's because, you know, and I, I keep going back to this example, people who shop on Craigslist keep shopping on Craigslist. People who are new to it and they like it, they hop on and then they at least use it for a bunch and then they might stop. So Facebook is is no different than any other platform. People are going to come on. They're going to be like, oh, this is cool. They're going to try it. They're going to test it. They're going to experiment. And then some people are going to stick with it and they'll never shop anywhere else then. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the way it is. So, so having it connected is a good idea. It's just that to me, I'm like, we need to have it so that it's streamlined. And this is where I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards um, a Shopify site for my Trex store just so I can integrate with it, you know. And then on my Shopify site, I'd be like, oh, if you want personalization, click over here. So still use my Trex site for everything personalized so I can drive people back to that if they want to do the personalization mm -hmm. to kind of minimize on things. But mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see what happens when they release their update. In a couple months. 
Yeah, I, I'm worried they're going to turn around. Well, they can't. I, I bought it, and they can't turn around and charge us more unless they're adding stuff that we're really going to want and need. Well, I think that's what the plan is, is that they're going to, because that's what they told me in an email, that they're going to do two versions. They're going to basically upgrade the version that we have, or update, I should say, update the version that we have, and then they're going to sell people the new, whatever their new competitor to Shopify is. And I don't know. I mean, because here's the thing is that I know I can I can rank Shopify pages. I know I can. I mean, that's what I'm doing with EP Laser. So that's where I'm, I'm leaning back towards. OK, well, if I but, but it go, also this also goes back to if we don't have a converting product, the, it's pointless and we can put products out there all day long. But if nobody wants them, we're just wasting our time. Mm hmm. And so uh, that's where Etsy comes in really nice is because it can it can be a better test for the products. And since it looks like it's going to be relatively easy to get on page one, then and I'm, you know, once I get the syndication stuff done, it should be relatively easy for us to push out content. Because what I'd like to do is get to the point, I don't know what feeds I can use yet. But from what Chrissy was saying is there might be a feed like if you post on Etsy, it you can push it out somewhere. So like, let's say you can tweet it out, right? Well, if you can tweet it out, you can do a lot more with it too. So I've got to, I've got to do some research because if that's the case, then we should be able to, where I can capture everybody's, like if you post something on Etsy and then Linda posts something on Etsy and then Brian posts something on Etsy and then I post something on Etsy, where each time we post something, it syndicates out to the network anyway. Cause I want to make one that's just like um, the best of e-commerce or whatever and let people, you know, and, and put that out there so that'll help us rank. Mm. But I gotta, I gotta get that far. It takes a lot of time to do each one of these, and I got stuck on one of the software programs and had to put a ticket in, and I just heard back from them. But yeah, the, I really like the, the stuff that I'm learning from this place is really cool because it's like everybody says, oh yeah, you just need to get out and get on social media, and I did not Gosh. know, I did not know how. I mean, I mean, it's hard, right? Because you, you have your Twitter account, you got your Facebook, mm -hmm. you've got your pin. I mean, it's so hard to get on all of these. So it would be nice if you can just create one piece of content and it goes out everywhere. And that's what these guys are teaching. But it's not just the ones that we know about. It's a bunch of ones we don't know about, too. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Do they mention, yeah. Um, hmm. Do they mention Hootsuite at all? Like, what are they? Are they trying to be Hootsuite's competition? Because I know, like, we've talked about Hootsuite. I know you don't like it. But... Um, I'm not a big fan, but, uh, you know, you can go on and say, okay, write all your posts and then go, okay, Twitter it, Facebook it, pinch it. You know, you can do all the different platforms. Are they right. trying so, to be their competition? Is that what they're shooting for? No, they, they are not, they're not competing. This is what they're teaching is a free way of doing this. So, the, the, what they're doing is so yeah it's kind of like the same thing but it's more it's it's more than that so hootsuite can only do hootsuite and buffer and they actually use buffer they actually we have to build stuff into buffer because there's some like google plus you can't you can't cheat you can only use like buffer and hootsuite and whatever so you can't cheat on those and sorry i'm kind of choking a little bit here <clears throat> and it, and so you have to use, but Buffer lets you use like it's it's still free because they have a free profile for it. So the the whole idea for them though is that you use this what they call if this then that, and it's a free platform that's out there, and it's just basically a bunch of codes where if this mm -hmm. happens then this happens. And so once you've right. set that up, you know, so you set up all your accounts, and once you set up set that up, you basically syndicate to everything at one time. Now, if you want to schedule content, you probably do have to use something like Hootsuite or Buffer. But the idea would be was that if you did, so let's say that you, or well, even in WordPress, like you can schedule a post, right? So the mm -hmm. idea would be is that when that post posts, it then syndicates out at that time. Mm -hmm. So instead of instead of having to to put your post in WordPress and then schedule it in in Hootsuite to do all these things to wherever you wanted it to go, you would just basically schedule it in WordPress and then the rest is done. Yeah, I'm assuming that they've looked for a little uh, plugin or something, and there's not. There is a plugin, but it's again, it's a paid one. So, and a lot of them are pretty expensive if you end up doing a lot of stuff. So, I found one that I was gonna try, but then I was like, I found this, and the the thing is, is that if a plugin breaks, you're down, you're done, right? Your entire network's done. 
So what happens with this one is that they only parts of it go down. Like when, when Facebook does their stupid update, you know, I'm sure they're going to have some sort of restrictions. And so then we'll have to address that at that point. But for the most part, once you have all of your recipes in place for what, if this happens, then that happens, then in all of your networks are, are up and running. It, it's just a matter of, you know, keeping an eye on them. And they actually have, um, it's relatively inexpensive. It's like five bucks a month and you can put up to a hundred uh, like feeds. So like different sites and stuff like that. You can put that really? in there. Yeah. It, well, to monitor them, to monitor them and make sure they don't go down. So oh. if it goes down though, that it can, it, you'll at least know because it's hard to manage all of those. Right. So like if Facebook for whatever reason shut down tomorrow for just because they're like, Oh, we need to do a major update. And we're going to shut down. And you didn't know, and you're like, oh, I need to get this information out, then you'd at least be able to have a, lo a location to check that. But I haven't gotten too much into that because I haven't gone into the areas that go down. Like they use one that's like blog.com and they're like, that site goes down like all the time. <laughs> like it's a horrible oh. site. So like, they're like, if it doesn't work, just give it. They're like, but it's, it's another place. Cause the thing with um, search engine optimization is that the more, real you appear to google the better the odds are that you're going to beat out somebody else for ranking so just because webfire tells me that i can rank well for something doesn't mean i will it depends on what my competition is doing so if right. my competition is in in local seo is where it's really competitive but because if google can say hey you're a legitimate local business and they can tell because you're everywhere they like you more than they like your competitor that isn't listed anywhere in fact i talk about that all the time is that people are like, why don't I show up in maps? I'm like, because you don't exist to Google. I'm like, you have no entity. You have no website. You haven't claimed your listing in maps. You haven't, in fact, in maps, you don't even show up at all because they don't even know you exist. And so if somebody types in your, your name, unless somebody's tweeted out some information about you or posted somewhere about it, you do not exist. And mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it, that's the way it is. And so for us, like, let's say we're doing e-commerce. If we can say that we are a legitimate e-commerce store or brand for that matter, we can just be a brand because we don't have to be a physical location. But if we can say that and we're competing for cat ornaments and our competitor, it looks like some shady, you know, drop shipper from China that has no information on it, but we look like we're a solidified brand. Google's going to prefer us no matter if they're more optimized than we are or not. Right. So that's where there's there's a lot of variables in there that we don't really know about because of that. So the idea is, is that if you have a legitimate business and you get out there and you get on these channels, then you're going to be able to, you know, get your information out regularly. And, and the other thing is, you know, to be honest, like I said, I've never used those free ones like the WordPress and Blogger. I don't remember which one it was, either WordPress or Blogger, but I went in and checked it afterwards. I think it was WordPress. And it said I had four people who had viewed my my um, post and I was like, what the, I can't even get four people to view my post on Facebook. <laughs> it's probably their bots. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm sitting there going, if I, but here's the thing is that if you can get I, from, from what I understand, because on WordPress, they have their own searching on WordPress. Like you can go on Word uh, somewhere on wordpress.com and see like other blogs that are going on and everything else. So, and there's other you know, there's lots of different things that are going on there. So there are ways that you can build from that community. But regardless, because WordPress is its own I, on its own IP, because Blogger is on its own IP, and because our websites are on our own IP, if we build something on WordPress and we build something on Blogger and we link back to ourselves, we have now have mm -hmm. two unique links coming into us right? from, from, from very good, solid foundation, like good authority. And, you know, these are trusted websites even though our unique one may not be as trusted as the whole platform is so those are these are all strategies but we don't have the time to do that right we don't have time to create the content for all of it that's the problem i am just sit here and doing my facebook and my i just don't have time for anything like you asked me do i have original designs yeah i don't have time to get them all up and get them going it's just horrible i know that's there's not enough time no, and that's exactly why I'm trying to build these syndication networks. It's just for me, again, that takes time. I have to go through all the training and read all the stuff and and it's not it's outdated because they created this in 2016. Not much has changed as far as how it works. There's just some little quirky things, you know, like, okay, well, instead of going to this page, you have to go to this page. Like there's one that used that I actually used to have. It's called Delicious and it's a bookmarking site. And it used to have really high authority. So 
what you would bookmark on it and it would give you like a link, it, you know, that link back basically. And even though it was just a bookmark, it was pretty powerful. Well, the problem was, was that they freaking shut down. So mm -hmm. I'm watching training on how to do delicious. And in the beginning of 2017 or whatever, they announced that they were no longer, they were going to be shutting down, that everything was going to stay active, but you couldn't add anything to it. And I was like, Oh great. Another Alexa. But mm -hmm. so I mean, there's, there's a lot of things, but the, for us right now, we're at, I think we're in a good position as long as the freaking truck starts sending out the damn orders. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Hey, I also had one other question. You were talking about the videos and um, how Google loves videos. Blah, blah, blah. Should we be putting a video on our, well, you're saying Trex doesn't rank, but you, um, like you saw the other day, I'm trying to get another site up and going, mm, mm -hmm. which right. is, you know, I'm going to link back to my Trex site. And um, I'm wondering if I should, should I be putting videos out there? Cause I've done a lot of spiritual videos. Um, and some of them, I think maybe not the, not, I may not have done them right just because I think people own them. But anyway, should I be putting, uh, doing a blog and putting like a video on each blog? What do you suggest for doing the videos on the pages and a blog? Well, I mean, you can, you definitely can, because the idea is that, you know, like I said, you do related content and you're still driving traffic. That's, that's as long as it's niche specific, that's going to be interested in because you're mon basically what you're doing is you're monetizing with your products. So let's say that you did a blog on can't do it on blog or WordPress, but let's say you have your own blog going on and it's not necessarily linked to your product, which I guess you could do it the other way, but you could, if it's your own site, you could always put an ad on the page that shows your product that's related to that. And then, you know, people could click on it and buy it if they wanted to. But you could also say, you know, you could also put links in and say, look, if you're looking for, you know, a great gift and you know, people, you see this in articles all the time where they'll have the article and then in the, like, they'll have like a little sentence in the middle of it. That'll say, um, I'm going to see if I have anything. Yeah. So, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and they'll have like a little, a little in the middle that says looking for a great gift, click here and then, mm -hmm. then go on to the rest of the topic. So it's kind of like sponsored content in the middle of their post. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot, a lot of different ways that, that you can drive it back anyway, but then you could always retarget them if you decide to do ads. I mean, there's gajillions of different ways if you're driving traffic. The, the thing is, is that you, without driving traffic, you'll never get sales. Right. That's why I'm, I'm not making this site. I, yeah. Okay. It's hosted on my trucks um, site, um, but I am, going to make it its own individual site doesn't have treks on it it actually is i'm doing it um for aliexpress okay so um i don't know i order some things i want to see how long it takes they actually said it would take seven days to get it out they it was out i ordered a saturday monday i got a thing saying it ships so now i'm just waiting to see how long it takes well if it goes to um, chicago it'll take longer why Chicago. There's something with there's something up with the Chicago USPS with international orders. Huh. Really? Mm -hmm. It's been that way for over a year, like almost two years now. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, mm, maybe I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I only know because we did drop shipping, you know, last you know, last year. And I mean technically our company our site can do it, but we don't drive any traffic to it right now. Because I didn't mm -hmm. I kind of got a little Mad. Yeah, I got a little yeah. mad at Facebook because, well, and I, I also have to say it was probably more myself because I was doing really, really good. Then they did the pixel change and mm -hmm. it's like everything, all the money I made, it just went back into trying to test ads and figure out how it works. I did everything I was supposed to do and they're like, and I'm like using the exact same ad creative and everything and they're like look well your targeting's not right and i would change my targeting and i'm like then they would change the interest and i'm like this is stupid i am mm -hmm. doing exactly what i did before and i can't get it to work and you know like i said they changed the schema data but i'm going to to shopify so that shouldn't have been an issue and then i was like okay well now thinking back i'm like well they did have those third-party vendors come in and that could have diluted their data 
Hmm. So that might be why so many people are having to pay more to get that. Because here's what happens is, so I was only spending, so let's say I was spending like 15, 20 bucks and I was able to find out if something was going to be a winner or not. Well, if something was going to sell or not. And then I didn't, I didn't really get a chance to scale that much before they changed the algorithm. And so we found a bunch of them that were selling. And then when we tried to push that out again, after the algorithm change, nothing, mm-hmm. we, we wouldn't even get a sale at all. And yeah, was, that, happened that doesn't make me. sense. I was just really frustrated. I'm not really putting any money into Facebook at this point. Um, I'm just, I'm just so aggravated. I've spent probably over a thousand dollars in advertising with them and I'm just, Oh yeah. We're really well past much. Huh? We're probably close to 10,000. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And, and we're like, look, there's no secret to this. This just sucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just sucks. And that's when I was like, look, if I spent 10 bucks on freaking Google and did a hundred dollars in sales, I'm not doing Facebook. I'm not, I mean, yes, I need to do some Facebook ads eventually, but just so I can, you know, keep up with that. So I keep my skills going, but I'm like, man, I'm not going to just throw money at it unless I'm literally just doing it as a test because this is stupid. I do not want to have to try to get a return back. I want to look, I really want to just gamble. That's what I want to do. You know, cause when you gamble, if you look at it as, okay, this is a game and I'm just going to throw this money away. I don't care. It's a lot less painful than if you're like, mm-hmm. Oh, Hey, I need to get money back out of this. Mm-hmm. So, but right now I'm like, look, I gotta make some money. So I gotta look elsewhere. Uh, I'm in the same spot. I hear you. So, all right. Well, maybe we should uh, let you get back to life. I'm going to get back to life, get some work done. Um, uh, thank you again. Really appreciate. Yeah. Have you heard I'm back still, from them? No, I was just going to say I'm still waiting to hear. Uh, he had gotten back to me. Something really stupid. Oh wait. Uh oh. I didn't see that. My fault. Four o'clock this afternoon. Oh, can you try it now? Okay. So supposedly it's done. I'm going to go in and try it. Uh-huh. Oh. So good thing we found that article. Uh, yeah. Because well, he got back to me with something really stupid. I told him what I needed. And then he's like, well, can you go in? I didn't realize. Well, it wasn't stupid. I had to go in and change the uh, um, DNS. Uh, um, yeah. The, uh, my, um, at GoDaddy. So I had to go in and change all those. Which I didn't which realize. Which that doesn't actually make sense because if you have it hosted on the Trek site, your DNS would have been pointed to their servers anyway. No, no. You know what? They were all working. And then when I changed them, I was like, well, let me make sure they're still working. Because I had them, I want to say they said Trex WP, you know, NS1. Oh, Trex. so they changed their servers in order to Yeah, make so I guess it's the name server I meant, not the DNS, I guess. Um, well, that is the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then I had to change it to Trex Inc. I don't know. That was just like, it was just something. And I, so I said, you know what? I did it on all my sites because I have a, um, like five hosted with them. And I said, I did it all. Let's see what happens. So now he's telling me to go in and try it. So I'm going to go give it a shot. Yeah. So that's exactly what happened is that they're, the hosting, in order for them to activate that, they had to switch you to a different hosting. Oh, that's why I had to change them all. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I tell you that part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Oops. That's hilarious. So, cool. I'm gonna go in, check it out, see if it's working, and actually, I'm gonna go to my C panel, see if it's, uh, see if I see that text site right now or text field, and see what happens. But hopefully it's working because it's just like put me on kind of pause. Uh, not that I, I always have something to do. Not that that's a problem. But oh, <laughs> it's yeah. something I no, really I, wanted. I completely know the feeling. Like when my Snappy Baby one got shut down, I mean, I'm still only up to 773 and all-time fines. Let me see what that one's up to. Um, wait, wait, wait. What's that? Can I remember the site I go into? Um, oh, board Commander. Yeah. This will, will tell me without me having to go in and out, which is so the software that I'm trying to work with right now is basically it's a browser. I think I was mentioning this to you guys. It's a browser so that you can have like multiple browsers within the browser. So I can have like if I let's say you go Chrome and you have all your browsers. Right. And then you have um, Firefox and you have all your little tabs and everything. I can do that just within one. So I can just switch to they call them personas. But um so the terminology is all different, but basically what I get tired of doing is when I want to log into something for little bit resources, I have to basically 
hopefully clear the cash if I want it to work right. And I don't want to clear my cash. I don't so either. I'm like, so I'm like, okay, I want my stuff, like the stuff I do all the time on my browsers. But I mm -hmm. want to be able to open up the other stuff and not have to like re redo everything all the time. And so this software is supposed to let you do that. I mean, they charge a monthly rate for it, but I'm like, wait, if it can do that though, it's worth it because I've been banned from my accounts. Every, <laughs> every single one of them I've been kicked out because, mm -hmm. and I'm sure it has to do with cookies. It has to do with cookies being on the same IP and everything because they don't care about the same IP as much as they do the same browser. Cause now it's spammy because you're on the same browser and you can't, cl you can't clean it well enough without screwing everything else up. And you, I guess you can do it in Firefox, but it takes like a night. It's a nightmare to do. And that's, so they, I learned about the software and I'm like, okay, but they, and they invited me to beta test it because they're releasing a new one. And my, the one I have, it keeps breaking. And it's probably because my uh, McAfee keeps catching it and thinks, thinking that there's something wrong with it. And I was like, dang it. So I'm like, I'm going to beta test their new one then. <laughs> so I'll have to test it out and let you guys know if it works or not. I mean, it's not cheap. It's just like, I think I'm paying like 67 bucks a month. But I was like, yeah, except for that, if I'm trying to switch between all these accounts, like how much how much time and money have I lost because I can't, my account gets shut down. Mm -hmm. Like that's like unacceptable to me. So I'm going to see, mm -hmm. let me go back to my sub accounts. I'm looking at all time fines and see. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm looking at this. I'm on the C panel and there is no text file again. They made a C name and they made it from what I can tell at an FTP file. There's uh, then I go into my other one. They did the domain key. So I'm going to have to see if that one works, but that's not on the one I needed done like right away, which I told him I needed the other one, but there's still only two fields, an MX and a C name. So I don't even know if this is going to work. Oh, this is going to be, I'm going to be up all night again with these people. All right. Oh, this is frustrating. It is. Even though I sent them the information, I don't think he's getting it. The yeah. Engagement. Well, the, in all honesty, is that a lot of people don't understand that stuff. Um, I mean, because I've you know purchased a reseller package and I have the capability to go in and like activate and deactivate things, I get a, it a little bit more. But there's still some stuff I can't do because I'm not the main owner of it. Mm -hmm. So he may have to go above him to somebody else and say, hey, how do we do this? And they may not even let him. I don't know. But they should be able to tell you that. They should be able to say, oh, look, you know, the ho this hosting doesn't support that. Mm -hmm. But not just, you know, oh, yeah, go back here, go back here. Hmm. I'm going to go into my MailChimp and see if I can't test it and see what happens. So, well, good All luck. Right. Go, good luck. go play with that. What? I'm going to go check my daughter. Yes. Thanks again, Kim. And we'll uh, have a good weekend and yeah, we'll talk do. on Monday, I guess. Yeah, definitely. You have a great weekend. Okay. <laughs> Take care. You do. Bye. Bye-bye.